All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the best from Lake Erie and HO scale. Uh, if you're not comfortable, you might want to get comfortable. This is probably going to be a little bit of a long one. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of new things to show, so I thought I'd kind of show what I've been working on. <clears throat> and then uh, do an overview of the layout, which I, I haven't done in a while, really. Um, at least not one that I explained, uh, you know, what the end goal is. Um, so let's walk, take a walk through and see uh, what I've been up to. And we'll go from there. Um, been uh, traveling for work. Busy with marching band. We leave for camp tomorrow, actually. Very busy time of year. So not a lot getting done on the railroad, but always try to make some progress. Um, to that end, I have been building up some Erie hoppers. Um, these will come in handy for my interchange with the Erie. Um, do they actually run that way? I have no idea. Uh, I do know when you see old pictures especially at North Bessemer, there was a lot of foreign roads, more than you'd think. Uh, so just kind of for the fun of operations, you know, have some Erie cars, having some B&O cars, having some Pensy cars. Uh, we'll make it a little bit of fun. But these are uh, the same roundhouse kits uh, that, you know, the whole rest of the strain is, with the exception of the one random two-bay in there. I think that's an Atlas. Um, and doing my usual... Uh, a fair of painting the wheels in the trucks, um, camouflage brown on the trucks, and just uh, some rust on the wheel faces. And then I just sort of dry brush the springs just to pop the detail out a little bit. Um, I intentionally don't do the greatest job painting the wheel faces because I want to be able to see them turning, like like you probably can in the video here. Um, all right, and there's one of my 3D printed offset bay window cabooses. I made a while back. So, got those cars built. Uh, I don't want to go too much into this right now, but you can see the diesel shot in progress. I am working on a video that will just be all about this build. Uh, it has been a mama bear, and it ain't done yet. Um, so, we'll talk about that, like I said, in another video. Um, I think a while back I showed... That brass offset bay window caboose, um, I'm working on a second one of those right now. It's almost done. I did get this titchy flat car built. Um, and then along with the bay window caboose, this is a Mark's Toys bay window caboose. I had lettered for the Bessemer, but I used a really dark red and black letters. So I took it back apart and I reshot it with the same red I've been using on the other cabooses. I'm probably going to hit the roof black on this one uh, and then re-letter it with the white lettering. And I actually have a second one I'm working on. Um, these are sort of fun for me. My whole family worked at Mark's Toys. I served my toolmaker's apprenticeship in the former Mark's Toys building in Girard. Uh, so Mark's Toys has a, a special place uh, around here. So having some stuff on the layout that uh, has the Mark stamp on the bottom is, is pretty fun. Um... And I think I showed this before. This is a Proto 080. Uh, I just don't think I did. maybe made a big enough deal out of it. So the smoke box uh, door, I, I drew that in SolidWorks and 3D printed it. And it recentered the headlight. The Proto headlight's a high mount headlight. I recentered it to be uh, in the middle. And then that's a cal scale bell. Um, here's a picture of the prototype um and you can tell it's still not perfect by any means but it does look the part uh a whole lot more so i like it i uh, gotta get my other one done that way now i printed a few when i printed it so uh just gotta put it in uh, i'm not quite done with this yet i talked about this car a long time ago and then i kind of set it aside uh daylight dave was a YouTuber that I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, 
just type in Daylight Dave in YouTube and go watch some of his videos. Uh, guy was a lunatic. Really entertaining. Really knew what he was talking about, especially among signals. Um, uh, but I loved his videos. They were, I really look forward to them. And, and Dave passed away a little over a year ago. Um, so I wanted to do a tribute car for him. Uh, his layout was a Union Pacific layout. Uh, he called it the Back 5 Railroad, the BACV, the Bay Area and Central Valley. So you can see I changed out the reporting marks, the B BACV. And I've been doing some, uh, you know, 50 style graffiti. Uh, Daylight Dave, he he said sweet a lot in his videos. He'd always kind of, you know, say it like, like sweet. Uh, and uh, he named all the little freezer figure characters on his layouts. And uh, there was one I will... Uh, keep this channel family centric uh a working a working female uh holly was on the layout so i, I kind of got the little holly in a heart here so i have some figures for daylight dave and holly i just need to get in sitting in the box car there uh but i uh, my little tribute to daylight dave uh miss that guy really miss his videos wished i would have got to meet him in person um okay other things or should we go right into it I think we'll go right into it that's that's pretty much what I've been working on um, oh I do have one other thing uh, did have a gentleman stop up entirely too kind uh, and gift me this brass sand tower uh, it's awesome um, I think I'm going to take one side of it off, um, and then I th think it might go right about here, right at the end of the fuel pad, uh, trying to figure out where it belongs, uh, in my engine terminal here. I'm not super interested in exactly where it would have been prototypically, just as long as it sort of looks right, uh in the shop scene here. Uh, and of course there's the hole for where the uh, diesel shop will sit. Okay, so let's do a quick overview of the layout. If you're very familiar with this channel, you could probably tune out right now unless you really want to hang out. Um, so this is, this is my project. It's a mess. It's almost always a mess. I'm always working down here. Um, This takes up the entire basement. It's approximately 30 by 50. It's uh, two levels in places. It's three levels and about half of it. Um, and we'll just kind of show you what it looks like here. So my back is to the door uh, coming down the stairs, which is in the corner of uh, the basement. And this is the, the room you walk into. And it always makes me happy when people come down here for the first time and they get they stand here and they're like wow this is crazy and i'm like yeah you want you want to see the rest of it <laughs> and people usually don't know what i mean when i say do you want to see the rest of it um get that train running um so anyway so this is the room you walk into and we'll walk through what all this is kind of as we walk around uh, you come around this aisle, and I call this the, the long hallway. Uh, again, we'll walk through what all this is, just kind of give you an overview of, uh, you know, what the layout looks like, just to, to walk through it. Get a couple trains running here. And then there's these coves back here, so I kind of call this the first cove. And you can see the third level down under there. And then the second cove. Um, and I've had a little bit of help on some things here and there, but 99.5% of this I've done by myself at this point. All right, so this is the Bessemer in Lake Erie. Uh, I, I say 1952, I'd take a lot of liberties, but it's the end of steam. It was still double tracked. Let's just take a quick look at the real railroad here. I got it turned sideways. Uh, if you're not familiar with the area, 
This is Pennsylvania. There's the state line. That's Ohio. And that's Lake Erie. Um, so, generally speaking, the purpose of the Bessemer took ore off the iron ore boats here at Conneaut and ran it south to the mills at Pittsburgh. Didn't go all the way to the mills at Pittsburgh. It interchanged with the Union Railroad, uh, which was also owned by U.S. Steel. And then a lot of coal would come south, so they'd unload those trains, start loading them back up with coal. Coal would come off these branches. Coal would run back north. They had this branch out to Meadville, Pennsylvania. Uh, that's a rail trail now, that branch out to Meadville. And then uh, this other branch here went to my town, Girard, and then trackage rights over today, Norfolk Southern, then the nickel plate into Erie, Pennsylvania, where they had some industrial switching uh, on 12th Street in Erie, um, which is also where the passenger trains ran. So uh, I'll carry this around with me. We can kind of refer back to it. Uh, but that's that's grounding us in real life. So, uh, this yard represents North Bessemer uh, on the layout. You can see the prototype picture of North Bessemer there. That's from the Nathan S. Clark book. Uh, huge yard. Uh, not much left of it today. Uh, but I got the front half built. got the second half to build yet and on the layout this is kind of works as visual staging really but uh this will be north bessemer i want to build a smaller yard in here that'll be my interchange with the union railroad that'll be more specifically for uh not coal and iron ore uh kind of all the other traffic just for the sake of operation uh, i'm going to show the union railroad going off that way into a tunnel uh, the union does go off into a tunnel but it kind of continues in the same direction as the Bessemer, so that's not really right. Uh, and I'll have a little engine terminal here and a loading ramp for a piggyback service, which did exist uh, on the Bessemer. Uh, it was after the era I'm modeling, but not by a lot. I think it was uh, late 50s, uh, early 60s. They were playing with piggyback service. And when I-79 got built, uh, that was pretty much the end of the piggyback service. So, uh, this is, like I said, North Bessemer. Uh, this is my brass Division Point Pacific, which is uh, a pretty accurate model to uh, the Bessemer uh, Pacific. In fact, this train is fairly accurate. And sorry, bear with me for a second. I think I got a picture laying right over here. Yep, there it is. I'm just realize I just happened to have it. Sorry for the walk around here. Right. There's the prototype. And here we are. Uh, I just got this engine running uh, a little more reliably. You're going to see it still kind of stutter in spots. Uh, I got to work on some additional power pickup. Well, when you see it stuttering, it's it's always the same thing. It's when one side of the driver's hits a dead frog, uh, the keep alive keeps it going, but you'll see it sort of hesitate for a second. So, all right, here we go. Out of North Bessemer. Let's talk about what the lad's going to look like. I do love this engine when it's running. Okay, so we'll be coming out of North Bessemer, and probably right in here, I'll do some unique little overpasses for golf carts for a golf course that's down towards the south end of the railroad. You cross those uh, under those on the turnpike today. And if you've driven across the turnpike, you've driven next to the massive Allegheny River Bridge. Um, I think that's going to be my next side project after I get this engine house built. You can see this bar of aluminum I have laying here in the front. That's going to become the deck of the bridge. Um, I think I'm going to 3D print the rest of it. Uh, I've got a lot of background in 3D printing professionally. 
Uh, and you can see a picture of that bridge there if you're not familiar with it. Um, absolutely huge bridge. My model will be uh, pretty freaking big, but it's still like 50% compression. Okay, moving forward. I'm past the Renton Mine and Unity Junction. Connected with the Unity Railway. Small little short line. And across my swing gate. My swing gate is uh, fully interlocked. Got too many things in my hands here. Prevent trains from going off the end. And this little section here will be my version of the Allegheny Industrial District, which, again, wasn't there yet in 1952-53, uh, but uh, it'll make it a lot more fun ops uh, having that here. Uh, again, giving operators some more things to do. Um, this switch going off to the right will be interchanged with the Cheswick and Harmar Railroad. I'm going to build a triangular piece of bench work yet out towards the fire extinguisher there. Uh, there'll be some interchange with coal traffic, some unique loads coming out of Westinghouse. Those would have been uh, nuclear loads, uh, things like uh, big pumps and uh, heat exchangers and stuff like that for the nuclear industry. Kind of passing behind my waterworks here. I've had people comment, you know, like, boy, this is going to be a problem when you have to go do something. I must not show this well. Uh, the layout's actually very intentionally built. There is nothing in the way of anything uh, down here uh, to be able to pull anything out. Um, it should be it's actually extremely easy to change out and work on. Um, I have, uh, one of my other hobbies is home improvement DIY, so that's pretty important to me. Alright, so at this point we enter the helix, kind of pay no attention to everything over there. Um, this will be Rural Ridge on the railroad, um, this will probably be a team track or something, and uh, I'll have background on the, the helix here, but that is entering the helix. And we'll uh, pause here till we come back out. All right, starting to come out of the helix. This will be Calmerville. Now, Calmerville uh, trains do come up a pretty good grade and through a cut that used to be a tunnel. I'm actually going to model it as a tunnel. The train will be coming out of the tunnel right there. Eventually, there'll probably be a coal mine or something on the top of that. That'll be from the Western Allegheny Division coming through the wall. Um, but coming up through Palmerville, um, this will be the Fawn Creek Loader coal mine here and coming into Standard Junction. So coming into Standard Junction, that means we're getting into Butler. Um, and you can see I've got the beginning of some tracks going off to the back there. Um, and this corner will be Armco Steel, today AK Steel. You can kind of see pictures of what that looked like there. Um, realistically, this will probably just be background pictures and buildings and, and mostly just an interchange yard. Um, And as we roll down, this will be Pittsburgh Junction. Uh, and these boxes here kind of represent um, me thinking about how Pullman Standard will lay out. So this whole kind of end of the peninsula here will be uh, Pullman Standard. Uh, should be quite a bit to switch. I think that's the one of the more famous pictures of the Bessemer passing Pullman Standard and Butler. You can kind of see what I mean there by those... those uh, those boxes and me trying to just think through what that's going to look like. Um, so yeah, lots, lots happening in Butler.
coming around the corner here we'll probably have the depot uh for butler the town will probably just be in the backdrops and this area here will be calvin yard and interchange with the bno Got a set of crossovers here that'll just aid with moving trains around, switching at Calvin. And then uh, this bridge was entirely 3D printed. Uh, this is based on a real location, Monroe Street in Butler. Passes under the section of the left here. Kind of, boy, I want to butcher this name. Kind of Clemson Creek uh, kind of passes under the middle. And then uh, I think it was the BNO, but it was definitely a rail line passed into the last uh, section. So every time we're looking at the layout, as we're going to the right, we are going north. So coming north out of Butler, um, we are rolling through CN Tower. Got a couple line side industries. DJ Joseph Scrap. Was at Oneida and Bell Brick and Block. It would be a, another kind of fun in, industry to have on the layout here. The Bessemer was a lot more interesting <laughs> than, than it is today. Um, these coal hoppers sitting in the back will be uh, load out for TASA coal loader number three. This will just be block swapping, dropping off empties, picking up loads. Of course, there's our local heading the other way. In fact, right there is that other brass caboose I'm working on. It just got clear coated. And as we come to this point, we'll stop the train for a minute. And we'll talk about where we're sitting. So, boy, sorry for the terrible camera work here. Looking at our map. We've come up from uh, North Bessemer through Butler. And we're coming to the, to the south end of Queen Junction. So, this is the Western Allegheny Division, which was a pretty famous Bessemer uh, branch line. Uh, in the later era, uh, but in the 50s, this was still owned by the Pensy. Um, so the actual interchange is on the other side of the wall, but this track here, I'm just laying in thinking about the, the Western Allegheny actually will be modeled, will kind of hug the wall, come up along the back here. I'm probably going to work in a mine or two to switch, and then we'll poke through the wall there. There was a tunnel on the Western Allegheny. Um, so I'll poke through there and there'll be a mine to serve up on top of the helix. Uh, so the Western Allegheny will be very much a functional working branch line. I needed an assistant for this video. Um, so, small yard here for uh, the interchange with the Western Allegheny, and that small yard will probably be in, in this area mainly. Uh, it's kind of, you know, small time railroad and really cool, you know, stuff, stuff looking like that. Um, so, this will probably be the actual turnout uh lead into queen kind of where we are in the basement right now we're way back in that second cove
Nice TCS wow sound for anybody interested. Uh, the coal mine in the corner there will be the Grant Mine. The Grant Mine was somewhat near Branchton and will be coming into GN Interlocking, which is probably one of the more interesting, cool pieces of track work on the lad. I have a whole video of building this. All hand laid in place. And right there is that thing I was talking about. Pickup problem. So this will be another block swap. Uh, loaded coal coming off. Uh, the Hilliards branch at Branchton. Pick up loads, drop off empties. You can kind of picture the Y at Branchton going into the corner there. And just to refer us back to the map, we are now here coming north. The line out to Hilliard served a lot of coal mines, so it'd be kind of a neat spot. Then, right past that, uh, pretty serious industry was Mercer Lime and Stone, uh, you know, part of the concrete industry. Uh, so that'll get modeled here again, mostly as a background building, but uh, definitely cars the interchange for Mercer Lime and Stone. There was a shocking amount of coal mines on the Bessemer. Uh, I think a couple hundred at one point. Um, so here will be another small one. Tassel loader number two as we come into Harrisville. A uh, little depot at Harrisville. And then uh, the tracks cross Pennsylvania Route 8 near Slippery Rock. Another interlocking at HX. Coming into Grove City, uh, on the back wall here will be Cooper Bessemer, which uh, they made diesel engines. In fact, they were instrumental in the early days of GE developing the FDL engine. They made big marine engines, stationary power engines, and they shipped them out on heavy-duty flat cars. Uh, I'm going to have, you know, box cars coming in with parts and flat cars going out with engines and castings and everything else. Freight House will be here in the front, and then uh, kind of more of the town over here with the, the depot and some of the basic streets in Grove City. Montgomery Lumber is an industry still served today in Grove City. And then George Jr. Road is a road I crossed uh, on my way to work for quite a while. Um, and then I took a little liberty here. The railroad's going to pass through Pardo, which was the very first mine ever served by the Bessemer. Uh, the tracks don't go that way anymore. They didn't for a long time. In fact, they were abandoned by, gosh, I think, the, the Depression. They were gone. But the main line went right between these tipples. And they uh, put coal in the engines right there. Uh, so those tipples will be kind of here where I have them sketched out. And then those, you know, little minor run carts went over this hill. Uh, and they loaded the hoppers on the other side of that and eventually into a drift mine further back. So those loading tracks will be back there. Uh, should be a cool little scene. Come past that, we cross uh, the reason the tracks don't go that way anymore. Um, the Porter Cutoff. Huge earth fill. US 62 passes under. Uh, and a cool little tunnel. You can kind of see the Porter Cutoff there. Just a massive fill. And we come into Fredonia. Um, Fredonia, there is an industry there. Um, 
little uh, feed uh, feed and hardware. They're loaded buckwheat. Um, and not past that is KY. So what's special about KY and KO when the train's going back into the helix there? So well, the train's in the helix. We can talk about KY and KO. So we've come up this far on the railroad. So KY is here. Greenville and the shops are kind of over here. And turn of the century, they built this bypass cutoff, kind of kept the tracks leveler, went on a huge uh, trestle at Osgood, and the Bessemer actually crossed itself uh, at Osgood. Kind of a really neat scene. I wasn't quite able to recapture that. Um, so the, the double track main line split. Uh, and today, even though it's single track now, uh, both of these routes still exist and are still in use. Um, so you got the shortcut across the K, what we call the KO line. This is kind of the bypass around Greenville. And then the tracks that go down through Greenville. So our, uh, our little uh, passenger train here is actually going to take the tracks through uh, through Greenville and you could uh, alternately go the KO line it's an option that still exists today so see we got our coal train in front of us coming out we'll uh, we'll stop here and uh, pick it back up when our train gets down and go into the next part of the railroad. All right, starting to come out of the helix. One of the things I got to do yet is build a track going this way, coming under this temporary bridge I have in there. It'll eventually be a trestle kit. Uh, and then flying over this other track will be the New York Central. And then the double track crossing level here will be the Erie at XN Junction, coming into Shenango. This is one of the spots on the layout I had to really compress a lot of things into one space. So this is the low line we've got coming in front of us. You can see, you can actually see the New York Central passing through there in that picture. Um, and then the Bessemer crossing, uh, crossing the bridge. Of course, that is the KO line on this temporary bridge here. And um, in the foreground, this will be Shenango Yard. And of course, KO line dropping down in the background. A little yard at Shenango. We'll cross Bridge 38. Got to build the second bridge. The Bridge 38 is kind of twin truss bridges like that. And we will come into Greenville. So the passenger trains pretty much ran out of Greenville. One would go south and come back, and one would go north to Erie and come back. Um, so you really couldn't get on the train in, in Erie and go to Pittsburgh. It didn't really work that way. Everything was based out of Greenville. Um, kind of a famous scene in downtown Greenville is, is the tracks that just come right between these buildings. And you can actually see the Bessemer logo here. This was, this was the Bessemer office building at one point. Um, so I'm trying to recreate that here. Uh, you know, when the tracks just come close between these buildings. And if you just keep driving that road out of town, eventually you go under uh, the KO line. So uh, that overpass will be here. It's just very compressed in layout space here. So 
zone. Coming through Greenville, we come into the shops. Uh, you saw earlier, I'm working on the, the diesel shop. The transfer table is in and working. I got a whole video on how I built that. Um, there's a passing track here uh, around the roundhouse and uh, multiple ways to get on and off the turntable uh, would be car shops here back shop machine shop uh, all the shops uh, it's not laid out the way uh, things really were in greenville at all it's you know making it work in model space but uh i'm also trying to make this be a fun area to run from an operator standpoint there's actually quite a little bit of switching that can get done uh, in the engine shop um, This is uh, actually where I'm working right now the most. Uh, I, th I think before I really get too much into anything else, uh, I'm just going to keep my attention on the engine servicing area here and just sort of try to finish it up, uh, honestly, uh, even if it takes me to the end of the year. Uh, I just I, I like engine terminals, and I think this one will be a fun one. Okay. Of course, if you listen to me talk about how this is supposed to kind of be the transition era, this train, uh, the, our passenger train is passing, looks way out of place, and it is. Uh, this is my one train I modeled. This is as I remember what the Bessemer looked like when I was growing up. All right, coming into this area, this is KO. So KO would be, uh, you know, if at KY was where the, the tracks separated um, and the KO line was the shortcut past Greenville, this is where they reconnect. So looking, looking this way, you can see that track climbing the hill and going off to the right, bypasses going out around the roundhouse and everything else. Um, on, our, on our map, KO tracks come back together. We're coming up to Meadville Junction, where the tracks went off to Meadville. And there are a couple cool little industries over there. Um, but before we get to Meadville, we got to cross the Hardtown Swamp. Uh, tracks kind of cross on a causeway over the swamp. Pretty cool. And you can see how I've done Meadville Junction here um, with the track these cars are sitting on. We can still interchange cars like cars we're going to. We're coming off the Meadville branch without actually having to model the branch. I do have some bumpers soldered on to the end of the track there, so uh, no chance of uh, disaster. Okay, now we're rolling into the town of Conneautville. There is a, uh, oh, some kind of processing plant at one end of town. I think they do soybeans today. Um, and at the other end of town, there's a feed mill. And I put in a team track. Uh, once this track up here on the, the right-hand side. Um, was there a team track in Conneautville? I, I don't know. But um, team tracks were pretty common back then, so we'll add one and it'll make for some good switching. Uh, after Conneyville, we passed through Springboro, and the Springboro Ballpark was a pretty famous place to take pictures. So uh, I'll add a little baseball diamond in here. Um, and also at Springboro was Albro Canning, which was another rail served industry. Um, I was able to find some labels uh, that will help me with signage. And coming into N.A. Tower. Now this is kind of on the wrong end of Albion, but it was just how I could make the layout work. Um, but this will be the end of signal territory when I get my signals working. Uh, from here north, it's all dark. 
Um, but this will be the entrance to the Albion A yard. Uh, got the feed mill at Albion here. And this is the beginning of the Erie branch. So one last look at the map here. So we're here. Our train is going towards Conneaut, which is not where the passenger train would have went. <laughs> um, and then there's this line up to Girard, the trackage rights uh, into Erie. So we'll cover those two things separate here. Let's follow the passenger train first. So this will be the Albion A yard. I'll have my small turntable, uh, small engine facilities here in the A yard. Some tracks coming around. Um, and then there was a pair of overpasses at Subway Street. There was a large light tower shining back on the B yard. And where all these buildings are sitting right now will be the B yard. Uh, a very sad excuse of the B yard. The real B yard was massive. It held something like 5,000 cars. Um, that, there's a picture of the B yard back in the day. It's uh, almost all overgrown with trees now. And then heading north out of Albion, you cross Ordock Road. There's a power substation. And it's real close to the tracks. Cross over Lexington Road. The Pensy E and P branch. Over Route 6N, crossing over into Ohio. And we'd start running along Conneaut Creek. Underneath the nickel plate, this bridge just got replaced. And then underneath what would have then been the four-track main line of the New York Central. There's some really cool stone bridges. You can kind of see them in that picture there. And into the Port of Conneaut. Now, just to kind of bring you full circle. The yard at Conneaut just sort of also magically becomes the yard at North Bessemer. We started right there. So I call this a self-staging railroad. A coal train going north and arriving in Conneaut is now a loaded coal train in North Bessemer ready to go south again, or go north again, rather. It's always going north. Um, all right. While those trains are running, we'll just kind of talk through the other route we could have taken here. So, here at North Albion Tower, had we thrown this switch, we would have taken the Erie Branch, which is where the passenger trains really would have gone. The depot will be set up to face the Erie Branch. We're dropping down at about a 2% grade. And on the layout, we'll cross Subway Street at grade, which is does not happen at all in real life. Uh, and right here, we'll duck behind the fascia. Down there is probably one of the neater things in the layout. It's a helix that goes back and forth through the wall. That helix comes out here. This will be Platea. We'll do some of the landmarks in Platea, like the Route 18 overpass. I got to put a switch in somewhere in here. There'll be an industry in here called Harris Construction. That bridge will be my representation of Elk Creek. And then we round the corner into Girard. So that's the end of the line right now. You can kind of see I'm starting to lay track out and think about it. Uh, in Girard, uh, I will have Main Street crossing the depot. 
And then really it's going to be all about Emsco and Mark's Toys for switching here. Uh, down here on the end, there'll be a coal tipple. Uh, there was a spot to drop coal along Haggerty Street in Girard. Uh, so that'll be in there. I'm trying to find any information on what it might have been called. If I can't find any, I'm just going to call it like Haggerty Coal. Uh, the tracks will come around, and they'll drop down an inch coming around this curve, which is about how they really do come into Wallace Junction. They turn to the right and go downhill. Uh, this will be Wallace Junction. The nickel plate will just be running along the back wall. Uh, again, just laying out tracks here. But this will be a fairly sizable yard for Wallace Junction, just because trains will start and or originate and terminate here. Get to the end of Wallace, the tracks will pare down, um, just to kind of imagine the running over the nickel plate. We'll go around this curve, and uh, we'll do Erie Forge as a thing to get switched, and then where I've got these legs set back, this front area here will be 12th Street Erie, which was all industrial switching, like, uh, oh boy, Erie Press and the Cyrus Erie, the Erie Waterworks, um, and the Passenger Depot at the very end. Uh, there'll be some staging behind uh, and on the very end, and then just sort of dead ends down here. I might eventually build a, a loop track to, to turn trains around, but that's a way, way, way down the road project. Um, and that's pretty much it. If uh, if you're still watching, uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of incredible. Um, but been a while since I walked through things and really explained the, the, the master vision. Oh, that's cool. There's our coal train coming up out of the helix. That coal train's almost 40 cars. Uh, all the old MDC roundhouse cars. And this train will just run for hours and hours and hours, no problem. Um, most everything on the layout does. Just goes. Alright, well thanks everybody for hanging out with me today, um, like I said, uh, teach camp next week, so who knows how much progress I'll make, but look for an upcoming video on this whole build of the, the diesel shop, that'll be out, and I, I'm not sure, I'm not going to promise, it might, it might be a while yet, but that'll be next, and, uh, and past that, uh, summer's winding down. I hope everybody's uh, enjoying themselves, and I'll see you next time here on the HO Scale, Bessemer and Lake Erie.